Hello, and welcome to the Nordic and Baltic Oscar contenders presented by Scandinavia in New York and the Scandinavian Film Festival of, of, of Los Angeles and the Baltic Film Expo at SFLA. Today, we're speaking with Joachim Trier and Renata Renstreet, the director and lead actor of the much acclaimed Norwegian film, The Worst Person in the World. The Worst Person in the World has been shortlisted for the Academy Award for Best International Feature and will be opening theatrically on February 4th in New York and Los Angeles. So please welcome Joachim and Renata. Uh, and can we start with the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the film? How did the film come about? Um, and you wrote the story with your uh, normal or writing partner Eskel Voigt. And uh, I guess the question is: Was Renata always in mind when you were writing the story, or did you have another actress in mind? No, I uh, I, I should. Uh, it, it, Renata was such an important part of of starting this process, she just didn't know it. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. I was in a writing room with Eskil Fucht. We were developing a few different things, thinking about what to do next. And um, this idea came up about a character. And I, I had had Renata in mind for, for a while because we'd worked together on Oslo August 31st, mm -hmm. 10 years previous, when Renata, we had to smuggle Renata out of her first year in drama school. She wasn't really allowed to work, but she had a smaller part, in lack of a better expression. Uh, and she came on set and, and did, did a wonderful few scenes with us there. And I really thought she was talented and, and, had, and then had admired her work in theater for 10 years and was thinking like, why doesn't she get a lead part in a movie? So it was kind of a, a, an opportunity to do something. And I, I think like in that process, of course, we wanted to do our, Eskil and, and myself, uh, our, our take on a Scandinavian romantic comedy and that obviously turned into some sort of a drama because we, we always end up talking about death and mortality and the melancholic themes, regardless of where we begin. But at least we had Renat this wonderful kind of joyful persona in the middle of it. So we were able to, I hope, bridge, you know, through her the joy and, and fun, but also the, the dramatic bits. But she was a big part of why we did this film. Okay. Um, and then, so with two men writing the female role, how much did Renata help shape the character from the very beginning, and how did this work? Um, I, I mean, when Renata came in, I think she really got involved, hmm. helped this, the, the story and, and the character development. But I, I do feel that we had a proper character in place already, but I think it was developed further with Renata's input, but I don't think, to be honest, and Renata, please, you know, join me here, whether I'm saying the wrong thing or not, but I, I felt that most of our conversations were about the themes and the character and, and the psychology. It wasn't necessarily about the gender aspect of it. How, how did you feel about it, Renata? Yeah, I've, I've understood too that you you try to write a complex human being and then a part of her identity is being a woman. And when I read it the first time, it was really, accurate and I was very moved by uh, the way you portrayed a woman today. I, I, I was very moved and, uh, you know, felt very close to Julie right away. But we had, I think our cooperation or our collaboration was about like uh, making it as detailed and rich and layered as we could with the, the, the really good script that was there from the start. So that was the process. And was there, is there Julia in you or was, was Julia based on another character that you um, had in, or another person that you had in mind? No, I, I really felt, you know, uh, shamefully uh, <laughs> that she was almost too close to me, mm -hmm. but, and I, I, I don't know if you remember that you Joachim, but I was like, I, I can't really find like uh, a way to distance her and be, I can't find, I need to like find something to play a character more. And you said, but just relax and just uh, let yourself into it and just uh, just be her, you know, uh, or it's not exactly what you said, you Joachim, you have no, no, better no, no. Life, But I remember very but, well, but I, I have to yeah. say without sign, I mean, this is my fifth film and I think it's a wonderful thing those those occasions like in this one where where an actor with and also with the skill set that you have i mean i think you're quite crafty your analysis and your perspective on the story and all that was was very advanced you know but i think it's wonderful to also see an actor let go and let let yourself sift through 
without control. And I think I think that's that's what I'm very happy about in the movie is that I see yeah. the lack of distinction and 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 you're you're trying to to nail an honest approach to every scene and thereby not necessarily dividing yourself from the character. Yet her story is obviously uniquely different than your biographical story. But there are there's only the possibility of you doing Julie, Renata doing Julie, and that's what I was interested in. So I'm I'm very happy you were you were brave about that because not, some actors have you know I got to put on that mustache and the hat and be someone else and and I felt that you you brought a lot of um, yeah a, a revelatory thing to it, which was which I think is a part of the well, quality of yeah. it. It was uh, quite scary, <laughs> but I, <laughs> and I never worked like that. I felt I I learned a whole new way of acting through your your way of working and that yeah just it was about being honest with these themes and we like discussing it a lot and trying to because they are very universal and it the the characters are so complex and multi-dimensional it's uh it's hard to even know who they are like real people it's it's all about the acting was also a lot about the dynamic between the characters and between the actors true, it right? was about yeah. us on on set and that was a very important uh part of it and and a way that you like to work as well so it's like a big group of friends making a movie about something we think is important and yeah it was uh, amazing yeah I, I guess like one part of my brain is just a film buff trying to figure out my craft and the other part of my brain comes from filming my friends skateboarding or making <laughs> little movies with my friends when I was a child. I've been filming my whole life. I come from a film family background and my grandfather was a director and my both my parents were, were in different capacities involved in making movies. So I grew up on film sets and I and I realized while film, filming my friends skateboarding in my teens, jumping down staircases and whether they fell and broke their arm or landed a complicated trick, it was still the event of something unique happening and then editing it together. I, I still have a little bit of that, like what, like Renata Reinsley <laughs> doing her thing with this scene, like that, tri you know, what will happen? And that, I think that openness and playfulness, regardless of, you know, trying to hit hit the marks and all that and, and making our shots and all that, you know, I, I think we need to sustain when making movies a bit of that playfulness. And I'm very happy you, you came along, like, you know that that's your style as well Renat I find you're quite uh, you can jazz it a bit you know play, like keep it loose I think that's good um as you mentioned before this film was sort of more of a Scandinavian romantic comedy um yeah. and Thelma was a supernatural thriller are you starting to start to challenge yourselves by subverting the genres a little bit more as a director yeah I, I guess we always fail though don't we we kind of we never make it clean like we really you know and maybe that failure is what we do best it's mm -hmm. like not doing the pure uh, metaphysical right. horror or or right. the pure romantic comedy i right. i i think since eskel and myself every time we meet now we're, we're writing at the moment i've been there all day actually this is now <laughs> evening in oslo you know and and we we're still sitting around like Hmm, what about you know like that old Audrey Hepburn movie or that you know strange family drama and we we riff off things and then it always turns into something else so yes I think you're right that when we started out 15 years ago with reprise we actually watched uh, Barry Levinson's Diner and Il Vitelloni by Fellini and American Graffiti and all these films about fr male friendships breaking out of of adolescence into adulthood and 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 but then we ended up doing something quite different after all, you know. So so sometimes it's good to have like um uh like a support wheel going in, you know, and 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 acknowledging the great history of cinema that people have done wonderful work exploring the tropes of the possibilities of types of stories. Like in this one, obviously, you know, screwball comedies from America in the in the 30s and 40s, George Cukor, you know. Um, the Philadelphia story is something we talked about, for example, like the, the, the whole tradition of the romantic comedy and and also, you know, Nancy Myers and like a lot of great modern things as well. We talked about uh, obviously Annie Hall and Eric Romare from France. But at the end of the day, you got to try to do your own thing and, and you can't escape your, your style, I guess. Um, but again, the chaotic element, like what will happen when someone as funny as Renata mm -hmm. 
is going through this or that you know that that's kind of like a, a bit of a challenge that's fun to to try to to push Renat into different corners and, and Anders <laughs> and Herbert too like great actors that's fun and how did you feel about that Renata yeah I felt it was a lot about trust and uh Joachim is very you know you can also see it in, in the characters he writes that it, he doesn't judge anyone. So you get to be, all the characters get to be everything that they are. It's mm. not bad or good. It's, mm. you know, the whole spectrum of being a human being. And I feel that everyone on set was so appreciative of being on that set, both because everyone have so much respect for Joachim. So you want to do your best, you know, you get very ambitious, but it's, uh, you also relax and you feel free to, um do whatever really because everyone trusts you Akim, and feel very good in his presence so uh that that's a very good place to be as an actress and i think everyone working on that set felt that too uh, another well a character in your film is oslo itself um this is the third part of the so-called oslo trilogy uh, so what sort of makes the city unique to you? And what do you feel that brings the city that cinematic quality that you're looking for? There's a, there's a couple of like physical things actually. Like uh, we had a, uh, we worked with the, for the first time with Kasper Tuxen, a wonderful cinematographer from, from Denmark yeah. who, who resides in Copenhagen. And when coming to Oslo, he really emphasized the fact that it is really a valley Copenhagen is flat. Denmark is a flat country. Norway is all about hills and mountains, even quite big mountains sometimes. And the fact that that has sort of an existential implication, Julie is standing at the opening of the film on this little hill restaurant, looking down upon Oslo, the capital of Norway, thinking like, what the hell am I gonna do with my life? You know, this, that, so suddenly like the perspectives of the city actually takes on a sort of an existential theme in itself, if you use it that way. Uh, so, so I think that's that's important, you know, to some extent. But I also think like sociologically, when I grew up in Oslo and kind of still, you know, it's not that big a city. It's still only like 750,000 people. It's not even a million. So growing up in my generation, I'm a bit older than Julie, um, maybe more the age of Axel, the, 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 the other character in the film that Anders Danielson Lee plays so wonderfully. Um, the sense of underground culture in the 80s and 90s where you know if you were into hip-hop and punk or something like you would and, and or comic books or music or movies like you would meet people from other you, you there, there weren't enough people into what you were into so you had to befriend other people that were into something else and it became kind of a dynamic city for people who were interested in maybe not just mainstream culture so there's a kind of a cool punk and hip-hop scene and, and music and all that you know so so you get to know people from different walks of life and i think that's that's a part of of, of this film as well is to show a lot of different characters mm -hmm. uh, that i hope will somehow translate when you watch it in america or, or mm -hmm. other countries that that there are types you know it's not like the homogenous viking the healthy norwegian that's go skiing like those are not necessarily the, right. the characters i'm most curious about right uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Renata, about Oslo? Yeah, well, I, I didn't move to Oslo uh, until, like, well, I lived here now for many years, but I was, like, in my early adulthood when I moved to Oslo, so I don't have the close uh, relationship that you have, Joachim, so I... Uh, but of course, I love Oslo and it's, you know, the, how you portray it, you fall in love with Oslo, you know, the lighting, you're very specific about the lighting and um, uh, yeah, I, I feel that it's its own character in the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. so become, you become an Oslonian. I feel that you're yeah. kind of a local now. <laughs> now <Aren't> I you? am. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> through this movie especially yeah <laughs> did you see that our the mayor of oslo wrote something on the facebook yesterday about our film oh. that he was grateful that we had portrayed it in a proper way and it was very respectful yeah. <laughs> and i was kind of a little bit proud there like okay good he'd read something about oscar and bafta shortlists and, and and was kind of you know wanted to put it out there that he appreciated us showing oslo in a good light abroad or something which is kind of yeah. sweet 
Yeah. So it and is. he also I, mentioned I, that you had you had become he knew that you were from Brahman, which is slightly outside of Oslo. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. He, he mentioned that you had become an, an Oslo <laughs> inhabitant. <laughs> I'm very Oslo. honored. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads to uh, my favorite one of my favorite scenes in the film was the uh, the silent or the still scene where Renata runs through the cities of Oslo um, or the streets of Oslo. Uh, could you sort of spill some cinematic secrets on how that was accomplished? Was it all CGI or was that actual? That, that was uh, the simplest way possible. That mm -hmm. was a lot of wonderful people that uh, helped us create that by standing still. That mm -hmm. was actually very little CGI. Like all the human beings that you see are actually standing as if they're frozen in time. And, and again, the, you know, we shoot on 35 and want to make movies with the human touch and mm -hmm. it, the wind in the trees and the lifelikeness is, you know, that, that's what matters to us. We like that messy, real feeling. So that's actually what happened. I think for Renat, they must, I mean, I don't know, maybe you want to talk about it, but you had to like run through, we had like, to, the police stopped cars, people got yeah, into yeah. position and Chaos. we were like, let Renata out of her cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was standing there ready, tripping. And then we had like three minutes to do this epic big scene that was, we knew was beautiful, but it was, we had to hurry. Mm. And, but a uh, very funny thing about that scene is that we, we had shot a scene and then we saw some more people, like more people than started out standing still. Mm -hmm. So people had actually joined in <laughs> standing still. <laughs> And I have to stay and the, for the, the production. Shoot. The production team had to go and get release forms that it's okay. <laughs> like you want to be in the scene, right? And they were like, "Yeah, yeah." You know. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and as a, a director, how do you work with your actors? Do you allow for a lot of improvisation with the actors, or or is it this is what's written? This is what we're going to shoot. No. I, it's it's a lot of preparation and a lot of conversation and a lot of rehearsals without doing perfect versions of the scenes but kind of trying to figure out uh how to straighten out the wrinkles in the text mm -hmm. things that don't work so that we don't meet that on set but then on set we we try to achieve a sense of freedom because it, it, if you if you prepared properly i think a lot of the it's like the intellectual level of the preparation of the actor has become instinctive or instinctual, mm. and then they can mm. be quite free. And I don't need to, to. It depends a bit on the day and the scene, but I think I think that suddenly we can allow a little bit of looseness. Oh, and and then there were bits that we improvised, like we had a good conversation at some point that maybe there were scenes lacking that expressed the early happiness of. Axel and Julie, Anders and Renata's mm -hmm. uh, characters. And Renata and Anders came up with some really great material about moving in and, and the opening of the film with some, her taking some books out of a, and putting them into bookshelf. There's some ad-libbing there, which I think is some of the best dialogue in the film, you know? So once in a while we opened that up and, and mm -hmm. great stuff would arrive, but I think it's about us knowing each other, knowing mm -hmm. characters and, in a way, I'm trying to hand over the character to, mm -hmm. to the actors so that they have an authority and an instinct that could even challenge me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Renata, this was your first major role and it really has put a, a new spotlight on your career. Um, are you getting a lot more opportunities because of this that you have never yeah. had before? Yes, absolutely. Like I, I get to talk to people I've admired my whole life and uh, uh, talk about uh, this profession and future projects. And uh, I'm very excited by about this year and what's going to happen. But I can't say anything, of course. Right. Uh, but I, I think that the collaboration with Joachim, I haven't done that much movies, but I've done a lot of theater and I think it's very rare. And uh I would of course love to work with him again and yeah but um it, it everything has changed <laughs> <laughs> well that was it for my questions thank you so much for joining us this morning or evening for you guys um and please do see the film it will be out in theaters i believe soon as well um and uh, good luck with the oscar campaign and i hope to see everyone soon
Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having us.